So over the last two and a half months, I have been working on building an outdoor kitchen. And of course, I have brought you guys along for the in-depth details on each major step, but since this build is so massive, I wanted to do an overview video showing you start to finish the entire process. If you have questions on any of the steps and find a link to all the individual tutorial videos down below. First, let's go back to the beginning. I have been dreaming of doing an outdoor space for about four years, but I've always moved other projects ahead of it. So I already had an idea on what I wanted, but spent time in my modeling software to really nail down the design details. This covered the actual size, the amenities in the space and their location. Then I passed it to Jacob who did all of the engineering and detailed modeling so that when we got started, we had a set of working plans to go off of. I am so lucky to have Jacob on my team and able to do this in house. But if you don't, I definitely recommend getting a firm to do it for you because it was extremely beneficial to have a set of drawings to work off that we could not only pull accurate dimensions from, but also have a clear overview of all the parts together or individually. I started this build on April 5th. However, my other two teammates who joined me for this build started the week prior. While I was getting ahead on YouTube videos, they were placing and pouring all of the piers to get a nice and level floor. This way, when I was freed up, we could immediately dive into building the deck. Week after week, we accomplished huge tasks. It's absolutely amazing how much work can get done with three people hard charging. Cindy was brand new to construction when starting this project, but she jumped into it with both feet and never shied away from an opportunity to learn a new tool or process. When it came time to build the roof, I recruited in David, who is normally working at my commercial building called the Woodshed. Everything is hard as it is, even working on the ground. So when you elevate everything 12 feet into the air, it drastically adds to the difficulty of things. Looking back on the entire build, two experienced hands and one training was a perfect amount for almost all the other stages. But for the roof, it was a wonderful additive to have three experienced hands. One thing that drastically helps speed things up and save on manpower is utilizing equipment. At every major step of this build, but definitely in the first three weeks of the building, you know, the deck and the roof, I was utilizing my tractor time and time again. I know most people don't own one, but if you're tackling a large project like this, then it's definitely worth considering renting something in order to help. When I built my shop, I ordered a SkyTrack for two weeks and definitely never regretted it. Another surprising MVP of the project was an electric blower. The 60 volt electric greenwork blower was always on hand, whether it be cleaning out holes before concrete, blowing off sawdust on the roof, or blowing off stone dust while cutting. You might not be able to invest in a tractor to aid in a project, but an electric blower is much more reasonable, and I promise you'll find a thousand uses for it on a job site. One thing that was really intimidating about the build is just how many specialties were involved and several I've never tried before. I've done decking and roofing, but for this project, I spent so much time researching new processes like stonework, the concrete countertops, DIY rainwater collection, building a pathway through the woods. It can be incredibly overwhelming to tackle something you don't know anything about. One, I hope my videos at least help shorten your learning curve, but two, the main thing to do is break the big pile into bite-sized pieces. When I start projects like this one, I don't allow myself to get deterred by the anxiousness caused by not knowing so many steps. Instead, I think I'll figure it out when I get there, then dive into the first task. Now, don't get me wrong, have a plan. I knew I would be doing stonework and concrete countertops and rainwater collection, but since I didn't know anything about those processes, I shoved them out of my mind until it was time to move to them and only allowed myself to focus on what the task was for that week. The main area you can't take this approach with, well, you can, but it makes things harder, is electrical. It'll pay off tenfold if you plan out where you want lights and outlets prior to ever getting started. This way, as you're building, you can leave yourself sneaky little chase ways to run wiring and lights later on. Watch my lighting video to get tips on things to consider and how to achieve seamless results. 
And if you don't know wiring very well, no problem. I actually found a local low voltage expert who was willing to let me pay him for four hours of his time to just consult. So that's another really good recommendation from my experience. Finding a local specialist to aid in your efforts is a great way to get pro results, but do it yourself. Another mindset to prepare for when tackling such a large project is to expect delays. I try to order everything in advance, but the entire world is experiencing delayed shipping right now. And I was sometimes finding myself doing things a little bit out of order in order to keep things moving along. I find that if I'm expecting problems, I react much more calmly when they actually pop up. So go into it with the mentality of overcoming issues that pop up because it's simply unavoidable with something on this scale. I always like to tell people that resourcefulness will always be the best tool you can put in your bag of tricks. Of course, that is my advice if the issue you encounter is out of your control. If the issue is instead a mistake of yours, then just remember we all make them and a little bit of humility can actually turn it into a fun story. At one point in the build, I looped the hoop straps wrong and found I couldn't pull them off. Nice. Now, yes, I could have cut them, but I thought it was hilarious and decided to leave them as part of the story. This is a choke. This is a basket. This is a Wilker don't. Now, big things to consider when building an outdoor space like this. Where are you gonna get power and water from? Bringing in utilities can be expensive, so be sure to factor them into your cost or factor them into how you pick the location on where the structure goes. I picked my location based off already having power underground. I originally thought to put it closer to my shop, but then I would need to rock saw trench a new power line to it. Now, water is easier if you're fine with going with rainwater collection. I'm literally collecting rain right off the roof and that's what feeds the sink to wash dishes and hands. If you wanna make it potable, meaning drinkable, then there are options for that too. If I didn't wanna use rainwater collection, then again, it would've just been another big expense. So building on this commenced on April 5th. Then the last big project, which was the boardwalk leading up to the space, was completed on June 15th. Something I added to the space that I'm beyond thrilled about is a mosquito repellent device. To keep the Texas mosquitoes away, I'm using a product called the Thermacell E55, which is a rechargeable mosquito repeller. The E55 repels mosquitoes by using a fuel-powered heat-activated repellent to create an invisible, scent-free 20-foot zone of protection. There's no harsh odor, smokes, or flames, and it is deep-free. It doesn't cause a mess, and the fuel is very easy to refill for continuous protection. If you're not a fan of black, it does come in several colors and is completely fuss free. In my opinion, it is a must have for any outdoor entertaining. It was at that point I had to throw a big break in celebration and I can't tell you how amazing it was to actually use the space. I moved in a grill, a TV, patio furniture. I stocked the mini fridge full, hooked up some tunes, called in my grill master dad and then kicked my feet up and enjoyed. Now don't get me wrong, there is still more to do. I mean, isn't there always? But for now, it feels great to have it complete enough to actually start using. In the coming weeks, I'm gonna be adding Wi-Fi out here and building a buffet so that I can have a dedicated table for laying out food. Then in the future, I'd love to add a fire pit hangout area off to the side and who knows, maybe even a stock tank pool. <laughs> Being a builder has to be the most amazing job on the planet. It makes me feel like nothing is off limits and that is incredibly powerful and maybe a little dangerous. It's funny because it is quite unusual to have something to this scale and not have a thing or a few things at the end that I would like to go back and change. But looking at this build, there honestly isn't anything drastic I would have changed. It was a ton of hard work, but very manageable since I was motivated. I have zero idea what a contractor would charge in order to build something like this, but I can guarantee that I was able to build it for a lot cheaper than hiring it out. If you're motivated, but this still seems too much, remember that you can easily scale it down. You can not only reduce the size to make it more manageable, but you can also eliminate a ton of things. For example, you can kill the entire fire pit and eliminate that. You know, maybe a fire pit sitting area off to the side instead. You could scratch doing concrete countertops and buy some. Those of course are just examples to get your wheels turning. 
If you do want to tackle an outdoor kitchen, then I really hope my series is a help. I put a lot of effort not only into the builds themselves, but also the tutorial to pass along information I think will benefit somebody trying to research how to do the same project. Again, I've linked to every video in the series down below. I would love it if you would leave me a comment down below letting me know what you think about my outdoor kitchen, and I would really like to know if you've enjoyed this series. I'll see you on whatever I'm building next, guys. Real quick, I wanna thank this video's sponsor, which is Ariad. I am a born and bred Texan, so I've always been familiar with Ariad being a high quality boot maker. And while I do have their boots in my closet, they are so much more than that. Ariad has put so much effort into their workwear line for women. That is actually designed by women. The whole line has a superior fit and long lasting comfort that moves with you on the job site. If you've been following along, you've seen me wear their boots as well as their pants in the cooler months that actually have deep pockets as well as side pockets that I use to carry around tools. Now that it's warm weather here in Texas, I have been wearing my Ariat t-shirts a ton. They have a rib collar, drop tail hem, and a relaxed fit. They're ultra comfortable yet equally durable, making them the perfect everyday work shirt. Regardless of what you're after, give Ariat a look as they always think about the fit, the function, and the durability in every item they make. You can use my code down in the description to get 10% off your order. Big thank you to Ariat for not only keeping me comfortable, but also supporting what I do. Stop it. You stop it. You stop happy dancing. No happy, happy dancing, dancing on site. That was a straight. Good luck. Hold on. <laughs> okay, maybe this. No. It might have to be you. Oh no. <laughs> oh, so close. Ow. No? Going in. Oh. Are you holding it? Or is it spinning? Yeah. Oh, and we also have to do this on the other one. Oh my god. <laughs> that was a near miss. <laughs> Personally, I think any time is a great time to build swiveling bar stools. You can click here if you'd like templates to build your own, or you can click here to subscribe to the channel.